Today, I'm gonna to be playing as Poland, uniting the West Slabs and defending Rod, my one true god. And with my strategy, you can do it too. Are you sick and tired of boring old Central Europe? Do you wanna play a sick new decision that actually slaps and makes the game interesting again? Are you simply a lover of pierogies? Well, do I have the video for you today. That cool? Hello, Ottawans and Ottawans from around the globe. Today, we're going to be playing as Poland. Today, we have some incredible goals. We are going to be trying to fulfill a whole bunch of decisions here. I'm going to try and start with uniting the West Slavs to make West Slavia. So if you take a look, that's all this territory all around here, including the wonderful kingdom of Poland, everybody's favorite. And I know Poland's everybody's favorite because almost a year ago, I got this one comment. And after that, my channel would change forever. Hi, recently I've become your subscriber. What do you think of making a video about Poland? What would you say about making the whole world Polish? I'd love to see that. Take care, Michael. I was not prepared for what was to come. Every single video, somebody's commenting about Poland. Ottawa is slacking. He's got to jump on the Poland bandwagon. Me, when Obi-Wan, Poland strong. I'm Polish, and I love that. World conquest, Poland now. This Polish Obi-Wan scared the shit out of me. I'm Polish. Edits could use some Polish. Ah, fuck. Anyways, here you go, Michael. I hope you and the rest of my Polish friends out there enjoy. Some other decisions that are gonna be really sick are like the Defenders of Rod. This one's pretty nice. You get the Hall of Heroes, so a special holy site building. You get Increased Fervor, Defender of the Faith, Holy Warrior. And it's pretty easy to accomplish. We're gonna have to adopt feudal ways at some point, so that's coming in. So I'm gonna start down here in Poznan, a beautiful, beautiful county holding. Now, as you can see currently, we've gone down the authority focus in the martial lifestyle, but he's got the gallant trait. And I'm not a huge fan of the Gallant trait, although it is good. We would be better off to get the Strategist trait. The reason being is because living off the land will give us increased raid speed, and we are going to be needing to raid like crazy to build ourselves up at the start. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and reset my perks. I'm going to pick up everything down this first tree here. The next thing we're going to do is just go on a raid. We'll raise all our boys and we'll fire them off. Uh, I'm just looking at anybody weaker. So over here, they have 900 and 700. This should be a pretty easy clap. I'm just going to race the capitals. And speaking of raiding, do I have some great news for you? What are you going to be doing when this YouTube video is done, eh? Eating your lunch with nothing on your phone like some kind of caveman? <laughs> Staring out the bus window waiting another few weeks for an Ottawa video? Oh, darkness, my old friend. Well, what I'm gonna be doing is trying to beat some serious challenges. There's a reason they call today's sponsor Raid Shadow Legends, one of the greatest mobile games of all time. And it's because they're constantly adding super tough content, like the Doom Tower. This new tower is basically a huge prison. To climb to the top of the tower, you're gonna need an army of champions. The regular Doom Tower floors are pretty easy to deal with if you've got a strong team, but the bosses are where you're gonna need some serious specialists in the mix. You'll need to find ways to remove debuffs and boost your resistance. A couple of bosses need specific mechanics to beat them. I could go on for literal ages about the strats to secure the dub here, but the real fun is actually trying things out and experimenting on your own. This month, Raid's got a new feature, Awakening, and a brutal new dungeon, the Iron Twins Fortress. If you're good enough to take out the Iron Twins, you'll see a huge payoff, and you can awaken your champions, which lets you choose a powerful blessing that can transform how they perform in battle. And bruh, let me tell you, these blessings look sick, and there's so much variety among them. But just wait, Raid has released legendary version of everyone's favorite champion, Death Knight! And the best part is, everyone can get him super easily and completely free. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for seven days between now and October 27th. You can also use the DK Rises promo code for a bunch of free items and instantly level up your strongest new champion all the way to level 50. Five Star Ascension. Promo code is available for new and existing players. And if you haven't started playing Raid, now is the best time. Click the link in the description or scan my QR code here on screen. You'll get some crazy unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free Epic Champion, Ina, 200k in silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard. Thanks so much, Raid, for sponsoring this video, and let's get back All right, to so it. So we come back from those raids, got a bunch of prestige and a bunch of gold. And that is really nice. The first thing I'm gonna do is flip this into my men at arms. So you'll see they got some bowmen and some light footmen. Not great pulls, to be honest. I love these Connie or Coney. 
2012, baby. Men at Arms regiments. These guys are sick. Biggest thing about them is their pursuit at 72. Like, this doesn't even compare. And what pursuit does is basically anytime you win a war, the amount of casualties inflicted on the enemy, like in that last phase of battle, is just insane. So let's jack these guys up. We still have 200 prestige in the bank plus 100 gold. That would be perfect just to flip into our holdings. I'm going to make sure I max out all these buildings right off the bat. Another thing you're going to notice is that we're at four of three holdings. See, we have four of these nice holdings in our lands to start, but we are taking a penalty because of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over to my lovely wife over here and I'm going to put her on managed domain. But she's not that great of a steward. She's only got plus one stewardship, which is quite terrible. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. You know, I see no reason to keep this wife around. Let's go ahead and divorce her. Bye, have a great time. I want to get somebody that's pretty decent. This woman, 26, and she's intelligent. Not Polish, but we'll take it. We'll take it. Witajcie. Next up, we got some sons. Lazy, arrogant, and vengeful. That's not that great. What about this son? Arbitrary, chaste, and stubborn. Both of these sons are absolutely tragic, so I'm going to see maybe we can go ahead and disinherit them this life. Maybe some of them will die in battle, you know? Let's just keep raiding. I think that's probably going to be the play. I'm also going to make sure that I'm calling hunts and hosting feasts on cooldown. So anytime this is available, I want to be doing it. Basically, hunts and feasts are going to give me prestige, which I can then reinvest in my army, reinvest in my buildings. So if we take a look, pretty much everywhere around here has been raided right now. So I kind of have to use my army as efficiently as possible and always be doing something. And as a result, I think I'm going to declare war over here on these guys. They only have a thousand dudes, 80 gold. It should be quick and dirty. It's only going to cost us 13 prestige too. You love to see it. Shut your stupid oh, we grabbed the valuable hostage, allowing us to enforce demands. I'm going to actually go ahead and try and grant it to somebody that is Russian. I'm going to go to my quarters and I'm going to see if I have any women in my court. So I have this woman in my court. I can find her a nice matrilineal marriage. This guy, 36, has 22 stewardship. He would make a pretty good vassal. And now that this guy is my champion, he's in my court, and he's got... I'm gonna go ahead and just grant him this holding because we are over our limits. And I'll explain why I picked a Russian later, but let me first talk about why I picked a high stewardship Russian. Having vassals with high stewardship is sick. Not only are they gonna make more money, which they can turn around and flip back into their own holdings, thus increasing the value of the land, but you can also put these guys on your council and kind of guarantee that they'll stick around in your court. That's kind of sick, actually making sure that your steward has extra high stewardship. The same thing goes for Marshall. If you have a vassal with high Marshall, they could be your commander or one of your knights, making your army absolutely unstoppable. And again, we're just going to be building all these buildings and maxing out our holdings as quickly as we possibly can. That's going to increase our prestige per month income, our gold per month income. Not only that, but these buildings will give you all kinds of bonuses. It'll increase our knight effectiveness, our men-at-arms damage and toughness. So I always prioritize building the buildings, maxing out my men-at-arms, maxing out my champions, and then we can kind of work on picking apart our neighbors and grabbing more territory. So while some of these guys don't have any allies, no gold, and have less dudes, I'm definitely going to declare war on them. All right, so I'm just going to rush my boys in. It should be a super easy clap. Oh, we just destroyed them. It was almost too fast to watch. Okay, so we could go ahead and enforce the demands down here. Loser, loser. Now, if you take a look at the duchies here, I've been slowly picking apart this duchy, right? Now, I'm going to try and keep my vassals kind of separated based on duchies. So, if this is the duchy borders here, I have this one vassal already within this duchy. I'll go ahead and grant him the titles down here so that when I do create the duchy, ultimately, he'll be the one to kind of own it for us. Because vassals really like having their personal duchy. Like, they like having all the titles within one duchy and holding the duchy itself. I like it, Kaji. So, if you want to kind of manage your vassals properly, that's how you should be doing it. And in terms of the rest of Poland over here, I can pick up this holding too. He's quite weak. It should be pretty quick. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and enforce this. Easy as you like. Okay, another 150 prestige. So we have a ton of prestige. I just want to make sure that we're building all the buildings in our main holdings here. And we're now up to potentially 3,600 troops just because we've been kind of maxing out all our buildings and slowly and surely waiting over time. Oh, we had a son. Finally, a son that is not terrible. Oh my days. This is our fourth son. And finally, young Piast 
has intelligent. As always, our first son. And his name is John! But this guy's Polish, oh, eh? We need a couple accents in there that I can't pronounce. That, that'll help. Beautiful. May you grow strong and wise. Yen. A maestro. Give me the real pronunciation. Yeah, so let's go ahead and declare war against this dude. We'll conquer the duchy. It would be nice to be able to catch this guy. Like, sometime today. Finally! Oh my god. Okay. 99% with that battle win. So we'll either let it take over or we'll just take it over. Oh, I just got trounced over here. Oh, that's not good. Where did these guys come from? Was I just sleeping? All right. We traded there. I got a little too greedy. Let's go ahead and enforce the demands. Perfect. Now we can choose a dynasty legacy because we have enough renown, but I'd love to play as young Yan here. So I'm going to start disinheriting some people. So now to create the kingdom of Poland, we only need five more de jure counties. Ooh, if we declare war against this guy down here, hello. we pick up his duchy and then one more, we could create the kingdom of Poland this life. Okay, so let's declare war on this guy. Oh, beautiful. And we got a valuable hostage after kind of going back and forth and giving up and receiving territory. Let's go ahead and enforce these demands. Beautiful. And now to create the kingdom of Poland, we should only need one more county. And I know just the one. Sakaji? Sad? Otóż nie. Sounch. Sounch. We're going after Sounch, baby. Let's do it. So let's go ahead and just declare war on him. Beautiful, and with taking that holding, we can go ahead and enforce the demands. So I'll go ahead and start creating some duchies. Two very boring minutes later. And with that, we can go ahead and create the Kingdom of Poland. Boom! You are now a mighty king. And we could also now create more men-at-arms regiments, so I'm just gonna grab a couple of more of these Coney guys. Beautiful. And we have another domain limit, which is really, really nice. Okay, so this might be a mistake, but uh, maybe not. I don't know. Um, we can offer vassalage to two people around us. This gentleman up here and this gentleman down here. Notice how I didn't even try and pronounce two accents next to each other. Holy Jesus. What is that? It'll help us expand our borders a lot faster, but I have to be careful because these guys have quite a bit of troops and if they're going to rise up against me, that could be an issue. So I gotta make sure that I'm bolstering my army and that I don't let them kind of slip up and uh, attack me. And our borders will grow slowly and surely. This border gore is kind of bothering me. Let's conquer the duchy. Uh, we'll grab both of those and should be pretty easy. And easy as you like, we take those too. So let's go ahead and enforce these demands. So now I'm just gonna grant away this duchy to this dude. I'll grant him, I'll grant him this duchy. He'll be nice and big and powerful. You'll see, he, although he does love me, the fact that I hold his de jure duchy, meaning that all his titles are within this duchy, he doesn't like that fact. So what we'll do is we'll grant him this title and he should love me after that, boom. And you'll see that uh, he, he really loves me now, maybe a little too much. I love you. You know, I'm pretty close to getting the Defenders of Rod. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. As I say that, I realize I have literally none of the options. All I need is a, a holy site, which I can totally get. Devoted Servant, I'm, I'm on my way. You know, if I get a pilgrimage, maybe I get lucky. I'm getting kind of old. I'm 63, which is for this game is pretty old, but... I'm gonna flip over to the learning lifestyle, grab the medicine focus, and that'll give me a little bit of a health boost, so that... <coughs> so that'll help a touch. I need a holy site, right? There's one up here, one over here in Plok, and one in Kiev, or Kiev. Plok is a tasty holding, it's right next to us. I kinda like that one. But over here, they only have one holding, meaning if I declare war, just sit my boys down on it. Should be an easy clap, no questions asked. So I'll declare war on these guys, specifically for the county. Oh, and easy as you like, we took that bad boy. So let's go ahead and enforce these demands. Now, to get up to the devoted servant as quickly as possible, I'm gonna host a feast. Because we are the Slovanskian religion, we will get 
piety from our feast. If you take a look, they have ritual celebrations where hosting a feast earns piety. Because as everybody knows, Polish people like to drink. Oh, we died! No, we were so close. Oh well. Okay, so we're continuing as this kid here. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's great, but he's he's not terrible. I mean, it's all right. Like, uh, let's go for the theology focus. Let's try and get up to devoted servant as quickly as possible. And about a son and player heir. Let's take a look at him. And he's just intelligent. Good old Budzewood. Maestro, did I get that right? Budzewood. Nope. Doesn't matter because I won't know about it till later. Oh, and look at this. We've our vassals expanded our borders. Did you catch that? So that's the thing about your vassals, right? You want them strong enough so that they can kind of take more land and expand for you, but you don't want them too strong that they pose a threat to you in terms of a rebellion, a dissolution faction. And we've just become a devoted servant. So now all we need for the Defenders of Rod achievement is to have four vassals have 60 opinion of us. Later. Okay, so I've, uh, so I've shuffled around some vassals and now that I've done that, if we take a look at our decision, the Defenders of Rod is available. And what this will do is give me a wonderful holy site. We'll become a Defender of the Faith. We'll gain the trait Holy Warrior. <laughs> You're now known as the Defender of Rod. And if you take a look, we now have our special building, the Hall of Heroes, which we can upgrade. The only thing we need for that is gold. And I can get some gold. Don't you worry, I'll get my hands on some gold. And I'm specifically going to do that by raiding down here in the Great Moravia. And we had another son. This boy's actually intelligent. Solisla. May you grow strong and wise there, young Solisla. And we've come back from that raid with 207 gold, 207 prestige, and a lovely prisoner worth 10 bucks. And I'm gonna use that to build my Hall of Heroes even stronger. And if we take a look at everyone around us, like all these guys up here, like look, this guy has 700 dudes, this guy's got 1,200 plus some allies, 1,500 plus some allies. So I should be able to kind of pick apart all these dudes above me and really just grab their land. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll cut back once I'm done. <laughs> Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. You join me in the year 914. So a couple years have passed. We've taken all kinds of territory up here. You'll notice I also have 8,000 guys now. I've been saving up my piety and my prestige. Every chance I get, I'm calling hunts, hosting feasts, or going on pilgrimages. I can now pass high tribal authority, allowing me to revoke titles at will if I need to. We also need high tribal authority for adopting feudal ways. Now, in order to do that, our Slovansky religion needs to be an organized faith. You'll note that we took one holy site up here before, and we also got our hands on the juicy holy site down here in Plok. So, what I'm going to do next is declare war all the way up here in Novogord. And these guys are quite weak. They have 869 dudes, and they're in a subjugation war. So, if we can pounce really quickly, take the one holding we need, we should be in good shape. So let's declare war and we'll take our capital county, which has our holy site. And with taking the capital, we got a valuable hostage. So we could also enforce the demands down here and boom. And now we have our third holy site under our belt. So if we want to go ahead and reform the faith, we can. And now this land also brings me over my domain holding limit. So what I'll do is grant it to a local Russian noble. Hello, how are you? I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the Russian culture. Now you can see our cultural acceptance is at 59% and we'll be able to form a hybrid culture at 80. Now what I wanna do is mix my culture with theirs because they have this tenant, the Drazinia. Now the Drazinia are these special men at arms units. They're heavy infantry, they're absolute beasts. So I kind of wanna meld my culture with theirs so that we can get this cultural tradition. And in order to be able to do that, I'm just gonna plot my steward down on increasing cultural acceptance over here. And you'll notice that a lot of my vassals are Russian for this very purpose because that does increase the cultural acceptance. 
Oh, and we've had a war declared on us from this guy over here. It's the Northmen are trying to take this holding up here. This should be super easy for us to break down. All we gotta do is sit our boys over here and raise them all up. I mean, am I really playing Poland if people are not trying to invade me constantly? And that actually segues perfect into a little history lesson about Poland. Did you know what the colors on the Polish flag represent? White is like the symbol of peace and nobility. Red is said to represent like the blood spilled during the struggle for independence and all the wars in its past. And the blue is to represent the many, many loyal allies Poland has had over the years. We're gonna fight them the old fashioned way. We'll put them to shame and that should be pretty much it. Look, they just landed and this is gonna be an easy clap. Bitch! <laughs> And you should be very excited for what's coming up next because the Great Moravia down here, well, they only have 3,600 dudes. So I'm gonna declare war on them. I'm gonna actually take a whole kingdom and I'm gonna take the kingdom of the Great Moravia. Now this will produce a little bit of border gore, but you know what? Like that's probably the way I can get the most land the quickest. And we're just slowly and surely taking all their holdings here. Beautiful, and with that one battle, we can go ahead and enforce the demands. Perfect. And now Poland is becoming ever more strong, ever more wide. Oh, you love to see it. Now down the learning lifestyle, I'm gonna pick up open-minded and what this is gonna do is increase cultural acceptance by 20%. Our acceptance is gonna go way up here. So we're currently increasing at 1.59 per month. We're almost at our 80% required. So I think what I'm gonna do now is just war these three guys. It should be really easy to do because we have 7,000 dudes and these guys have like 2,000 no allies. So uh, yeah, we'll pretty much just clap them up. No questions asked. So I'll cut back once I've uh, kind of warred all these dudes and that's all done and dusted. Okay, so I clapped up those little guys and now it's time to make some money moves up here. So we can reform our religion and create a hybrid culture. So let's go ahead and start with the hybrid culture because this is probably the best one. We're gonna form a culture. We're gonna make sure we stay West Slavic. That's gonna be very important for our decision. In terms of our traditions, I'm gonna make sure we have this Drusenia, these Coney Raids, and I'm gonna get rid of staunch traditionalists because it makes creating hybrid cultures a lot more difficult and I don't want that. So let's go ahead and form this hybrid culture. Why do you have to be mad? And now that I made all the Polish people watching so mad that they clicked off the video by melding their culture with the Russians, we can really get going with the Polish jokes. Where do I buy the Nike shoes? To a new age, a new era, and a new people, the Polish world domination. And now that we've unlocked that culture, I can also go ahead and create these men at arms units, these special armored footmen. As you can see, they have 46 damage right in the tribal era, which is really sick. Let's go ahead and create a bunch of these and we're in good shape here. Now I've gone ahead and saved up my learning lifestyle points to pick up profit. Now what this does is makes faith creation and reformation costs 50% cheaper. So when we reform the faith here, it'll be quite cheap. Now in reforming the faith, I've changed out a couple of tenants. One being warmonger. So I want my culture to really love war and to be going to war all the time. So warmonger is the exact opposite to pacifist. You take a negative opinion if you're not at war. You have conquest Cassius bellies against neighboring rulers. It's kind of sick. The other one I want is pursuit of power. You know, it reduces tyranny gain, reduces title creation costs. We're gonna be invading, creating titles left, right, and center. This one's gonna be perfect. And for the last tenant, I'm actually gonna pick up megalithic construction so that we can build some megaliths in our temple holdings, and that'll increase our development growth, and it'll allow us to kind of bring our lands, which are super undeveloped, to a point where it's kind of developed. Because if you look at the actual development around here, it's, it's kind of weak. So this will help us increase our development kind of overall in all of our lands and allow us to kind of move forward from there. Other than that, the only thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna make sure we have lay clergy so we can hold our temples, and as always, unrestricted marriage. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for. Perfect, and we're ready to reform, and we just need a good Polish red color, and we'll be ready to reform the faith, baby. So now we have a reformed faith, we have a reformed culture, and all we're missing to adopt feudal ways is more technologies. In terms of our succession, I've had all my sons die on me. I've lined up this grandson, He's intelligent, he's a fortune builder, diligent, content, and temperate. So his stewardship's really good, and he's gonna be great for when we make that switch from tribal to feudal, and we need lots of gold income. He's gonna be perfect for that. 
the other thing I've been doing is I've been sitting on all of these titles. Like I literally have so many titles that I haven't created. So I'm gonna go ahead and create them now. Boom! So that puts us up to 1712 prestige. With that, I'm gonna make some more of these Druzna boys because they're pretty OP. Crank those up almost all the way. And it leaves me just enough prestige to go ahead and adopt feudal ways. So I'll go ahead and do that. We're on our way to feudalism. Long live Poland, baby. And now look at all the holdings we have. So it's created some temples and some cities around. So we can grant away the temples. I don't care about those too, too much for the time being. And with the rest of my gold this life, I'm gonna do a couple things. The first thing I'm gonna do is found a holy order. Now, holy orders are phenomenal. Not only will they decide to rent out some of your cities for gold, but they also fight for you against the evil, evil heathens, these bloody Catholics that do not believe in Rod. So let's go ahead and found this holy order. Now with the remaining amount of gold, you'll see I'm making negative gold per month because we have so many men at arms. So what I'm gonna do is just go around and make sure I am investing in buildings or any building that will make me gold per month. I'm gonna go ahead and buy it. And just checking in on how much more I need for West Slavia. Oh my God, it's just one holding from Bavaria, a little thing and a little thing. And just like that, my holy order now wants to rent out this city and they'll pay us 341 gold for that, which is beautiful. I love that. Your request is granted for Rod, baby. And we got the notification that we'll be dead within a year, but that's good news. And we're now making 12.9 gold per month and we have 9,000 troops, most of which are elite men at arms. Yeah, so now we just have to kind of transfer over our leadership to our son, pick up the remaining holdings, and then unite the West Slabs. Okay, perfect. And we've died, so we play as this son now with a united Poland. Uh, so we do have a bit of a dangerous faction against us. All these guys here, this guy is probably the most powerful at 1,400 dudes. I really kind of don't want to deal with him, so I'm going to arrange a marriage between his son and, you know what, I think my sister should be sufficient. You're my friend now. And this faction will pretty much be dissolved now. We, he can't join anything, so we should be pretty much good. Oh, great heavens! I said that way too soon. Everybody just joined a different faction. So uh, the faction did pop up again, but I think they're weak enough where I should just be able to put them down no problem. So I think I'm going to let them rise up. All right, uh, you want freedom, you'll have it at death. All right, perfect. So we know the rising up. We should be able to just clap them up real quick before they get all together. We can just catch them. Oh, and they're dead. Okay, and I took a bunch of territory from them. I'm actually at 98%. I'm just gonna wait it out and hopefully this just ticks over now. Perfect. So 100% I can enforce these demands and I have a ton of vassals in my prison. I'll go ahead and ransom everybody off. And with all that ransoming, we're getting closer to uh, positive. <laughs> What's up? Oh, and the Holy Order coming in clutch, asking for a new city, giving me 400 gold. So I'm actually in the positives now, which is really, really nice. Make sure my wife is on managed domain. That didn't help enough. Shit. So I'm basically going to let my gold tick up. I'm going to construct new holdings in the form of castles and temples and cities. Uh, okay. And it looks like I died under mysterious circumstances. Bro, somebody murdered me. Oh, that's so brutal. Okay. Um, all right. So I'll play as my son here, but he's young. He's 19. He's, he's not bad either. He's uh, intelligent and he's a mastermind philosopher. The only thing is he's got paranoid, which is kind of bad. So now we can go ahead and declare war on them. I'm just gonna go ahead and declare war for the duchy. I only need two duchies from him. So I'm gonna start with this one and halt. Let's raise all our boys and just fire them in. Oh, and we had a side. Let's take a look at him. Oh, perfect. He's an Amazonian. I was kind of hoping for an Amazonian intelligent boy, but that'll be good. And by taking back a little piece of territory, we've won this war against Germany. So let's go ahead and enforce the demands down here. Uh, basically, if you take a look, our whole lands here are like, they have such low control. So I employed an executioner and then I'm just going to come on over to my prisoners and I'll just take some guy like this Russian dude and I'll just execute him. Uh, I'll do a public execution and for that we'll lose stress and we'll gain nine control in all my counties. 
Oh, it looks like Germany's at war again, and they only have 300 dudes, so they're gonna be relying on their allies heavily. I'll just go ahead and pick up one of the last holdings we need right here. And let's see if we can't attack them here. Oh, perfect, and we just stack wiped them. Perfect, so with the main capital, we get a valuable hostage and 100% of the war score, so we can now enforce this against Germany. So now we just need one more duchy down here in Bavaria, and look, they only have 400 guys. They're fighting a war against Hungary. Okay, let's declare war against this little kid. We'll pick up the last little piece of a duchy we need, which is Bohemia, and we should be able just to clap them up here. Oh, where'd they go? Stop hiding for me. Shoo! Perfect. Oh, and these guys are over here fighting my war. All right. Ooh, again. Oh, beautiful. And we just took another holding, giving us 100% in this war. So we can go ahead and enforce that and take a look at mighty Poland over here. We're absolutely killing it. Let's go ahead and unite the West Slavs. And the Russo Poles are going to develop a random military group innovation. We'll develop a random civic innovation. We'll gain absolute crown authority, which is going to be super nice. And we'll gain the West Slavia title. So let's go ahead and unite the West Slavs. You are now a mighty Tsar. Glory to West Slavia. Let's take a look. Oh my days. You're now known as the Wend. Tsar Stanislaw the Wend of West Slavia, baby. And I think that's a perfect place to end it off. Here's what's going to happen. I'm gonna put the save file in the description. You can download it and keep playing the game. If two people use that save file to unite the Slavs and send it to me via email on screen right now, I will do an episode two. I have so many more like Polish and Eastern European memes that I really wanna use. So I'm kind of hoping people do this. Now, if you're Polish or you simply love a good pierogi, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Anything from pronunciation corrections to, to corrections on my cultural understanding to hell, send me some good Eastern European memes. I'd love to see them. I think that part of the world has such a unique and funny sense of humor. And as always, if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and vidaiche. The Ottawa Welshman, the CK3 man, I'm the king of this land. If you want renown, well, I got it. The way I run my house, you know you want it. Got a thousand sons, all named John They probably don't know that their cousin is the mom Tutorials played through speed runs to win No challenge too great for the Ottawa Welshman